Ash Wednesday fell on the month of February in the year 2018, and I visited the Otomi village of Cruz Blanca in the state of Veracruz in order to participate in some of their traditional indigenous observances of the Carnival Week, which is a highlight of that region, the Huasteca area toward the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Saturday of that week, I had enough time in Mexico City to return to the Aztec Great Temple, the Wei Teocali of the original capital Tenochtitlan. This was my first time at the temple and museum in almost four and a half years, and this gave me an opportunity to revisit some of the old exhibitions that have been there for uh, many years, as well as explore some of the new discoveries and displays that were about the uh, temple grounds as well as the museum itself. I was especially eager to film the top floor of the museum, which I count as among the highlights of the entire display. And that is because it includes among the most elegant, elaborate, and colossal of the works of Mexica arts that had been discovered in and around the temple area. However, it was difficult for me to get a so-called clean shot of the top floor because there were so many people about, and I was hoping to have some sort of brief video session where I could just walk through by myself and take a very clean, quick scan of the top floor's displays, which you'll see a little further ahead. And so I just walked about the museum on my own time. I was in no particular hurry, and I just wanted to feel and really breathe in the airs that were all about these many wonderful and ancient works. Here, for instance, you can see me posing next to one of my favorite works in the museum, and this is a representation of the earth goddess Tlaltecutli, literally meaning Earth Lord. Because these deities are such an important part of my pantheon and my spiritual identity, visiting this museum is very much a spiritual pilgrimage for me. Touring these many pieces gives me a chance to reconnect with the spiritual forces that govern the Aztec cosmos. They are forces of the earth, wind, fire, water, the upper and lower worlds. They are the beings that created and governed the cosmos in which the Aztecs resided. With that in mind, having just had this moment with the Earth Goddess, I continued to go about to the museum for just a few moments until suddenly the guards were having to escort us out of the museum. I was trying to ask what was going on, what, uh, why were they uh, taking us out? And it was not until they actually led us to the, uh, through the emergency exit and back out onto the streets that one of them explained that there had been uh, reports of a tremor that were shaking parts of Mexico City and even though I didn't feel anything of it, I thought it was uh, very curious that such a response from the earth itself would follow our encounter so immediately. Once the coast was clear, we were allowed to go back inside, and this gave me a chance to go all the way back up to the top floor because I knew that I would be the first and only person on that level, and this gave me the chance to now provide the video that you're about to see. The Aztec temple had two shrines at its peak, one dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the god of war and patron of the Mexica civilization. The other shrine was dedicated to Tlaloc, the god of rain. Here is an illustration of the fundamental duality that governed the Aztec cosmos. This combination, this conjunction of forces, the forces of war and rain, the forces of death and life, the forces of masculine and feminine that, when combined in proper proportion, maintained the structure and the integrity of the universe. That was the ultimate purpose of Aztec religion, that, that is to maintain the equilibrium, the constant flow of opposing forces that keep the universe in perpetual balance. Earlier I mentioned the tremor that followed my brush with the earth goddess Tlaltecutli. Just as I was beginning this part of the narration for Tlaloc, a downpour ensued outside. The twin shrines at the top of the Aztec temple represents the concept of duality, and this is just one of the many ways in which the Great Temple embodies the governing principles of the cosmos. The Great Temple's four sides represented the cardinal directions, and it was even positioned within the capital so that the sun rose directly between its two shrines on the mornings of the spring and autumn equinoxes. In addition, the Great Temple was a symbolic mountain by which it represented the fifth direction the vertical axis pointing up and down. Many of the ritual remains and spaces around the temple either represented this vertical reckoning of the universe or delivered offerings in those directions. 
This puma skull was set as an offering within the temple with a large green stone bead in its mouth, similar to the precious stone that was set in the mouth of a human for burial as payment to enter the underworld. Archaeologists continue to excavate around the Great Temple, and new discoveries are becoming publicly visible, such as this fantastic oak tree, which was discovered within the past few years. What is interesting about this oak tree is that colonial sources have documented the presence of a tree that Aztec priests had planted at the base of the Great Temple. And they did this as a space to represent a body that could reach to the heavens and could be situated upon the surface of the earth and whose roots could reach down into the underworld. This is a very common symbolism found among um, the Mesoamerican civilizations such as the Aztec, the Mixtec, and the Maya. Planted into niches and caches within the Great Temple, the offerings themselves could represent cosmic shape. Many of the most exciting discoveries at this site have been these spectacular assemblies of ritual offerings, deliberately combined and arranged in ways that reflect the three levels of the Aztec universe. This display showcases offering seven. Notice the abundance of marine animal remains, coral, conch, clam, and other shellfish. Toward the back is the jaw of a sawfish. Sea animals represented the depths of the underworld. We also see a turtle shell near the center, and toward the left, a flat knotted symbol representing earthquakes and other types of movement. These have to do with the surface of the earth. And to the left are a pot with the rain god Tlaloc and the peaking head of a stone sculpture depicting Xiuhtecutli, the god of fire. These then represent the upper world. This arrangement was therefore a microcosm of above, here, and below, just like the architecture of the great temple itself. By walking through the remains of the Great Temple and its companion museum, you may appreciate how the Mexica Aztecs regarded it the center of the universe and an embodiment of its principles. Organized along the cardinal directions, aligned with the sun, and leveled like the heavens, earth, and underworld. It was a place of mythic duality, which brings us to today's mask. Today's mask is one of the most shocking discoveries from the Great Temple because it was not only made from a human skull, but further accentuated with a variety of decorative materials, such as pyrite beads set into the eye sockets, perforations along the back rim, and stone knives embedded into the nose and mouth. This mask was not for human wear, but rather to adorn the figure of a god, most likely Mictlantegutli, the god of death. Indeed, colonial writings have illustrated sculptures of the death god with a large mat of hair, and here we can see how it would have been attached. This mask returns us to the idea of the great temple as a structure of duality. On the half of the rain god were deities related to fertility, growth, and life. For these things to benefit the Aztec Empire, however, required the forces on the side of the war god, violence, sacrifice, and death. These are the gods from the half of the temple dedicated to Huitzilopochtli. The Aztecs understood that for life to continue, its energy required constant circulation between gods and humans, which they upkept through sacrifice. Ritual ensured balanced equilibrium between the opposing forces of duality, such as day and night, life and death, growth and decay. And this was the ultimate purpose and responsibility for human existence. Thank you for watching and good roads.